So we let all painful feeling like hunger. So when you hungry, you need some food, right? To cover it. Fade away and do not stir up any new feelings. Thus my life goes on smoothly, blamelessly, in content peace. Is it clear? So, whatever we have, we are satisfied. You see, Antu's mom offered a lot of vegetable. We couldn't finish it. <laughs> so even three days, we couldn't finish it. So a lot of vegetables for heels, for me and for Santu. So here said, would that man on such an occasion choose for his own affliction or for others' affliction or for the affliction of both? No, Venerable Sir. Jivaka said, No, Venerable Sir. Does not that man sustain himself with the blameless food on that occasion? Yes, Venerable Sir. You see? So when the Buddha explained him one by one, one by one, he asked the question and Jivaka is going to answer, Yes, Venerable Sir, blamelessly they accept the food. So I heard this, Venerable Sir, Brahma abides in loving kindness. Venerable Sir, the Blessed One is my visible witness to that for the Blessed One abides in loving kindness. Today, I understood the monks, Buddha, and monks and his disciples, how they are living as a monkhood. So, they always practice loving kindness. Today, practically, I saw and understood. So, he accepted that advice. So now the Blessed One is going to explain Jivaka, any lust, any hate, any delusion whereby ill will might arise have been abandoned by the Tathagata. So Tathagata means, so Buddha is going to talk to the Jivaka, right? So Buddha always indicate, always say Tathagata said this. Tathagata said that, you know, he never said, Buddha said this, Buddha said that, he never said that, he said, Tathagata said this. So he has a jivaka, any lust, any hate, any illusion, whereby, whereby ill will might arise have been abandoned by the Tathagata, cut off at the road, made like a palm stump, done away with. So that they are no longer subject to future rising. So Tata, the Buddha, the Blessed One, he cut off greed, hatred, delusion, no lust, no hatred, no delusion arises in his mind. Completely cut off from the, the root from his mind. If what you said refer to that, then I allow it to you, Venerable Sir. What I said referred to precisely that. So even though if you complain, because he already eradicated all the defilements from his mind, no greed arise in his mind, no hatred arise in his mind, no delusion arise in his mind. So delusion means what? Answer? Delusion means what? No, 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 no. Exactly. Not knowing the four noble truths. Four noble truths. Suffering, origin of suffering, cessation of suffering, the way that leads to the cessation of suffering. The way that leads to the cessation of suffering. How many altogether? Four. Suffering, dukkha. Origin of suffering, samudaya. Cessation of suffering, Niruddha. The way that leads to the cessation of suffering, Maka. These four noble truths, if somebody don't understand, we say, 
delusion. Okay? So when you understand the four noble truths, that means wisdom will rise in your mind. So here he is talking about, this is the loving kindness. So exactly the same things he is going to explain. The compassion. So as I said, if you know the love, how to practice loving kindness, then compassion and meditation very easy. The same things he's talking about here. So when you practice loving kindness, the through the loving kindness, you attain the first jhana, second jhana, third jhana, and fourth jhana. So when you feel in from the center of your says it will go to the top of your head, then we change your meditation like Buddha is talking about to Jivaka the sixth direction right he said one corner that means forward likewise the second backward likewise the third left side likewise the fourth right side above below and then around all direction this is we call the sixth direction so, during the first jhana, second jhana, third jhana, fourth jhana, when you were attending that, and if any hindrances arise, you just use the harmony and practice that. Okay? So that's why the beginning I said, you have to know the five hindrances first, and then harmony is practice right away. Recognize it, release it, relax, tension and tightness and bring up the whole santa by smiling, keep the whole santa as long as you can. So if you know those two things, this practice is very simple. So now he is going to explain compassion. So as I said, when you radiate loving kindness, six direction, so your meditation will change from loving kindness to the compassion. So how do you know, how do you experience? You will understand. Your mind become very soft than before. Like cotton. Okay? So when you practice one hour, two hours, three hours, then you see the tears is falling down from you. You experience that. Karuna. So he said here, he is going to explain about a compassion karuna. Jivaka, here a man, lives in dependence upon a certain village or town. He awaits providing one quarter with a mind imbu imbued with, imbued with, uh, let me read from here, compassion. Likewise the second, likewise the third, likewise the fourth, so above, below, around and everywhere, and to all acts to himself, he averts perverting the all-encompassing world with a mind in bitter love, compassion, abandoned, exalted, immeasurable, with a hostility and without deal. You see, if you know how to practice loving kindness, compassion also same things. No different. Just you feel the compassion, that's all. Then a householder, a householder's son comes to him and invite, invites him for the next day meal. The monk accepts if he likes. When the night is ended in the morning, he dresses and takes in his bowl and outer robe. Goes to the house of that householder or householder's son and sits down on a seat made ready. Then the householder or householder's son serves him with a good arms food. He doesn't think how much, he doesn't think how good that the householder or householder's son serves me with a good arms food. He doesn't think that way. If only a householder or householder's son might serve me with such good arms food in the future. He does not he does not think thus. He eats that arms food without being tired to it, infatuated with it, and utterly committed to it. Seeing the danger in it, 
and understanding escape from it. Why do why do you think Jivaka? Uh, sorry, what do you think Jivaka? Would that monk or on such an occasion choose for his own reflection or for another reflection or for the reflection of both? No, Venerable Sir. Does not that monk sustain himself with the blameless food on that occasion? Yes, Venerable Sir. I have heard this, Venerable Sir. Brahma abides in compassion. So first time he said loving kindness, and now he said the Brahma abides in compassion. Venerable Sir, the Blessed One is one. My visible witness to that, for the Blessed One abides in compassion. Jivaka, any lust, any hate, any delusion, whereby ill will might arise, have been abandoned by the Tathagata, cut off at the root, made like a palm stump, done away with so that they are no longer subject to future rising. So if you become enlightened, the last will not arise in your mind. Hatred will not arise in your mind. And then delusion will not arise in your mind. So he said here, if what you said refer to that, then I allow it to you, Venerable Sir. What I said refer to precisely that. So he explained first time his loving kindness, how a monk was practicing loving kindness when he was living in a village or town, and how did he practice the compassion? He already explained that. Now he is going to explain joy. So in the scriptures you will find altruistic joy. See the sutta. Or in the modern book. What is the difference between altruistic joy and joy? So altruistic joy means, okay, Santo Eten Tarjana, for instance. And he said, Bhante, I attain already Tarjana. So I am happy to hear that. And joy arose, one sort of joy arose in my mind because I heard about his attainment. That is altruistic joy. Okay? But when you meditate and attain the first jhana, second jhana, third jhana, fourth jhana, and then the compassion and joy, that joy is uplifted joy. Okay? That one is the meditation joy. It doesn't mean that someone, someone was successful and I heard and I was happy and joy was in, his, in my mind. That is the artistic joy. But whatever you experience when you attain the, the base of infinite consciousness and then ability joy will rise in your mind, that one is called only joy. Ability joy. Meditation joy. Okay? Is it clear? So here, that's why I don't use the altruistic. It's, that one will be the joy. Only joy. Strong joy will arise in your mind. We call mudita. So, the joy meditation, the exactly the same he's talking about here. The Buddha said, here, Jivaka, some monk lives in dependence upon a certain village or town. He avoids perverting one quarter with a mind imbued with joy. So, first times I said loving kindness, second compassion. Now he's talking about joy. 
Likewise the second, likewise the third, likewise the fourth, so above, below, around, and everywhere, and to all as to himself. He avoids the property the all-encompassing world with a mind imbued with loving, um, sorry, joy. <laughs> Abandoned, exalted, immeasurable, without hostility and without ill. Then a householder or a householder's son comes to him and invites him for the next day meals. The monk accepts if he likes. When the night is ended in the morning, he dresses and takes in his bowl and outer robe, goes to the house of a dead householder, householder's son, and sit down on a seat made ready. Then the householder, householder's son, serves him with a good arm's foot. He doesn't think how good that the householder, householder's son, serves me with a good arm's foot. If only a householder, householder's son might serve me with such good arm's foot in the future, he doesn't think that thus. He eats that arm's foot without being tired to it, infatuated with it, and utterly committed to it. Seeing the danger in it and understanding the escape from it, what do you think, Jivaka? Would that monk on such an occasion choose for his own affliction or for another's affliction? or for the reflection of both. No, Venerable Sir. Does not that man sustain to himself with a blameless food on that occasion? Yes, Venerable Sir. With a blameless. Blameless. With a blameless he take the food. Free. In his mind, no greed, no hatred rise. You know? I have heard this, Venerable Sir. Brahma words in joy. Venerable Sir, the Blessed One is my visible witness to that. For the Blessed One words in joy. So how many you got now? Loving kindness, compassion, and joy. How many? Three. The last one. So last one is talking about equanimity. Upekka. So loving kindness metta, compassion karuna, and joy mudita, and the last one is equanimity upekka. So he said, with a, imbue, with a mind imbued with equanimity, likewise the second, likewise the third, likewise the fourth, so above, below, ground, and everywhere, to all as to himself, he avoids uh, perverting the all encompassing world with a mind imbued with. Equanimity, abandoned, exalted, imaginable, without hostility and without ill. Then a householder or a householder's son comes to him and invites him for the next day's meal. The monk accepts if he likes. What do you think, Jivaka? Would that monk on such an occasion choose for, he, for his own reflection? Or for another's reflection or for the reflection of both. No, Venerable Sir. Does not that man sustain himself with a blameless food on that occasion? Yes, Venerable Sir. I have heard this, Venerable Sir. Brahma abides in equanimity. Upekka. Venerable Sir, the Blessed One is my visible witness to that. For the Blessed One abides in equanimity. Today I understood how Buddha, how the Blessed One, how the Blessed One disciples live with loving kindness, compassion, joy, and equanimity. Today I understood practically, I saw. And then his, his great Jivaka said, the Buddha said, Jivaka, any lust, any hate, any delusion whereby cruelty and discontent or aversion might arise have been abandoned by the Tathagata, cut off at the root, made like a palm stump, done away with, so that they are no longer subject to future rising. So in the future, in 
the Buddha's mind, lust, hatred, and delusion never arise. If what you said referred to that, then I allow it to you, Venerable Sir. What I said referred to precisely that. So now he is going to explain if you kill living beings, what sort of offenses you'll commit. Okay? So he's going to explain if anyone slaughters a living being for the Tathagata or his disciple, he lays up much demerit in five instances. How many? Five instances. So what are that? When he says, go and fetch that living being, this is the first instance in which he lays up much demerit. Go and fetch. F E T C H. Go and fetch that living being. That is the first instance in which he lays up much demerit. This is number one. And number two. When that living being experiences pain and grief on being left alone with a neck halter, this is the second instance in which he lays up much memory. Unwholesome action. And the number three, when he says go and slaughter, go and kill, please. If you say that, go and slaughter that living being. This is the third instance in which he lays up much demerit. And number four, when that living being experiences pain and grief on being slaughtered, this is the fourth instance in which he lays up much demerit. How many you got now? Four. And the last one, when he provides the Tathagata or his disciple with the food that is not permissible, that is not permissible, permissionable, okay? That is the fit in instance in which he lays up the much demerit. So if you offer, if you provide, for the Tathagata, for the Blessed One, and for His disciple, which is not well, permissible, okay? Which is not allowed, we can say, not allowed. But He is still offered to them, offered to the Tathagata, offered to the Blessed One and His disciple. That also, you lace up much demerit. So you have to know these five instances, okay? And then eventually, when this was said, Jivaka Kumarabhasa said to the Blessed One, it is wonderful, Venerable Sir, it is marvelous. The man sustained themselves with per permissible food. So, whatever have permissions, by the Blessed One, we can accept only that food. He said, you ca we cannot accept the ten kinds of meat. We cannot take it. If somebody offer like Ontu, he killed the one dog, and then he bring the meat for us. <laughs> we, cannot, we cannot eat that one, because no, no permission here, <laughs> not allowed. Okay? This is according to the discipline rule. The man sustained themselves with the blameless food. Magnificent, venerable sir. Magnificent, venerable sir. From today, let the blessed one remember me as a lay follower who has gone to him for refuge, for life. So you accept a refuge. Refuge, refuge is every morning, right? So he said, from today, please allow me 
please accept me. From today, let the Blessed One remember me as a lay follower who has gone to Him for refuge for life. Okay, so this is the loving kindness, us, um, compassion, joy, and equanimity. In this sutta, the Blessed One explained the Brahma Vihara. So that's why I chose this sutta for tonight. Do you have any question? Do the monk, do the lay people have to follow the same rules as the monks for accepting me? Like if a family member gives something out of party for somebody? No, no, for the lay people, no problem. And here, between lay people and then Buddha and his disciple. For the lay people who don't have such rules. For the lay people who just have the five rules. Not to lie, no, sorry, not to kill in living beings, not to take what is not given. We can say, abstention from killing, abstention from taking what is not given, abstention from adultery, abstention from telling lies, abstention from drinking alcohol. These five rules only. So if you keep the five rules, wow, you're the superman. <laughs> so try to keep that one when you go home. Okay, but now here you observe the eight percent, right? So you are the higher than Antu, higher than other people because he has five five percent. You and Santu have the eight percent. So Santu Antu, his name is Antu. Okay, his name is Santu. Your name is he, right? So Antu have to respect you because you are higher than him. He has only five rules, but you have eight rules. Right? So you are super well, right? Than him. <laughs> so he is, you are not smiling. <laughs> so, <laughs> you have to be a happy guy, okay? So, <laughs> so you have to be happy like me. So when you go home after finishing this retreat,